Hello? No, I'm preaching. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm doing. No, I don't, I don't know. Well, that sounds good. Okay. No, I really should go because they're watching. <laughs> what are you going to eat? That sounds, yeah. I, let me talk to Katie and I'll get back to you. All right, I got to go. No, yay, they're still watching. Okay. All right, bye. This is the time of year when you get the call, isn't it? This is the time of the year when you get the call that says, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? <laughs> what are you doing for Christmas? What are you doing for New Year's? So you get the call, you get lots of them. Friends and families, people inviting you. They want, they want to know, what, what are you, it's, it's time to make plans, and I'm a planner. I am a planner. I really like to make plans. I like to know exactly what I'm doing. I like to set it out and put it on my calendar. I want to know what's going on. But you're going to get all these invitations, right? And they're going to say, what are, you, what are you doing? Why don't you come to our house? Why don't you come? And what are you, you always, uh, for me, I always want to know what you're going to eat. <laughs> all right? What are you having? Is there going to be anything wrapped in bacon? <laughs> That's, amen? I got an amen from the back. The question is, is if we're going, are you going? You've been invited, and you have lots of invitations out there. You've been invited to a lot of different things in life. You've been called to a lot of things. You've received a lot of calls. You've see, received a lot of invitations. And what we're going to do this uh, month, really, I've decided that instead of jumping to a new book and then have it interrupted, really, by Thanksgiving and Christmas, that I just we're going to do a little topical studies in, in Proverbs. I love the book of Proverbs. I always have. Um, Proverbs is one of my favorite books. I, I love to read it. And, I, and one of the reasons I love to read it is because I'm a little ADD. <laughs> and, when I, and you can just literally open up the book of Proverbs and just any page you can just start reading. And you're really not out of context because that's how it's written, right? It's just like every other line is a whole different piece of wisdom. So it's like you could read one sentence and you can just stop and think for 10 minutes and go, that's, that's good. And then read the next sentence. And then, now, there are some themes in Proverbs, but truly they stand on their own. And there are sections. And this morning, we're going to be in Proverbs 8 and, and Proverbs 9. And we're looking at the call of wisdom, the invitation of wisdom. I want to, uh, chapter 8 is an invitation, and I just want to start with there. Really, we're going to be in chapter 9, but if you have your Bibles with you, and I hope you do, Proverbs chapter 8, we hear the call. Verse 1. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? One of the things I love about Proverbs is that it takes, it takes some personification here. It's turned wisdom into a person. And so wisdom speaks to us. Her name is Lady Wisdom. Lady Wisdom has called you. You hear the phone ring. She's calling. It says, the proverb says, doesn't wisdom call you? Doesn't... The, doesn't understanding raise her voice to you? She is calling. Maybe some of you didn't answer the phone, <laughs> but she is calling. Verse 2 says, at the highest point along the way where paths meet, she takes her stand beside the gate leading into the city at the entrance she cries aloud. I think it's worth noting, right, that she calls out to us at the crux, at the intersections of life, at the entrance of the city. There are so many decisions to be made, and understand, wisdom is calling out. I don't know why. You are undoubtedly this morning at some intersections in your life. There are some decisions that you are contemplating. Some, what, do I go this way? Do I go that way? Hear it now. Wisdom is calling you. Wisdom is calling you at these intersections of life. Verse 4 says, To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. No one has the monopoly on wisdom. God speaks to each and every one of us. You may think that some people don't receive the call, <laughs> but everybody receives the call of wisdom. 
But truly, though, the question is, is do we answer the call? Wisdom calls to us. Do you pick up the phone? <laughs> Jump down a little bit. Like I said, we're really going to be in chapter 9 more. She, gives the, the, she speaks of the value of wisdom in verses uh, 10, 11, and 12. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing can compare with her. See, nothing is more valuable than wisdom. You may think that gold is more valuable than wisdom, but wisdom is the most precious commodity. Let's be real, right? If gold is scarce, wisdom is really scarce, right? <laughs> I got an amen, right? I mean, that's the truth. Wisdom is scarce. You have to seek it out. Verse 19 says, my amen from the baby. My fruit is, is, is better than fine gold, and, I, and what I yield surpasses choice silver. The value of wisdom. Verse 22, then, maybe you ask the question, well, where does wisdom come from? I love this, and uh, this is really the reason I, I had to start in chapter 8 is because I love this section right here. Verses 22 to 25 tells us the origin of wisdom. Where is wisdom from? The Lord brought me forth. As first of his works, as first of his works, the Lord created me first. Before Adam, before Eve, before the earth, before his deeds of old. I was formed long, I was formed long ages ago at the beginning when the world came to be. When there was no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water before the mountains, were settled in place before the hills, I was given birth. God created wisdom. God created wisdom. And he created wisdom at the foundation of the earth. We were created along with wisdom. The origin of wisdom. Like I said, chapter 9 really gives us the same invitation Wisdom, Lady Wisdom, is going to call you. But we're actually going to receive multiple invitations. I want you to think about that for a moment. Beyond Thanksgiving, and I know that many of you, just like Pastor Glenn invited some of you to, uh, to, uh, to his house for Thanksgiving. But I know you have other invitations too. You've got family, you've got friends, you've got places to go, people to see, and you have to choose, right? You can't go to all of them. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I mean, really, you can't. You can't do it all. You have to choose. You can't be three places at once. You can't be ten places. You can't do everything in life. You have to choose the direction you will go. So we receive in chapter 9 the, the long version of the invitation. It gives a little better picture of what this invitation entails. What is it that Lady Wisdom is really calling you to? Well, let's read. Chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up it, she has set it up its seven pillars. Its seven pillars. Now, we know the seven is always a picture of perfection and holiness. That's what seven is. It's a, that's the number's meaning. It's that symbolic meaning is that seven is a picture of holiness. Seven is a picture of perfection. So she invites you to her house, and her house is a picture of holiness and perfection. You've been invited to a house of holiness. You've been invited to a house of perfection. Verse 2, she has prepared her meat, mixed her wine. She has set up a table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come eat my food. Come drink the wine that I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. I love Lady Wisdom's invitation because look at all that she has in here. She, she calls from the, the city. She calls from the height of the city. She sends out servants, and she sent to you this fantastic, fantastic invitation saying, I've, my house is re ready. My house is built. 
She's prepared food. She's prepared drink. She set a table. She's really, this is, this is a gift of hospitality. Hospitality is hard, isn't it? You don't know? Have you ever had anyone to your house? Have you ever had Thanksgiving at your house? Or yeah? It's hard at work, isn't it? It's a lot of work doing Thanksgiving at your house. It's a lot of work doing like Friday dinner. <laughs> really, isn't it? I mean, it is. You gotta clean and you clean. And you clean a little more, then you get the food, and you gather all this food because you're trying to make it nice. And if you do it, if you're really trying to create events, then you, you know, you like fold the napkins into swans, and you do all those little things. You scrub off every little speck that the dishwasher never gets on your, your silverware, and, and you get all those off, and you set the table. You prepare the food. It's a banquet. This invitation. Is a banquet. It's like it is. It, she invites you almost to a, a Thanksgiving meal. She sends servants and she beckons you. She says, "Partake, partake." I love Thanksgiving. <laughs> Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. I do. Thanksgiving is close to my birthday. So growing up, it was always like my birthday and Thanksgiving. That's how it happens. And, uh, and I liked that. I didn't have any problem with that. I thought it was fantastic. Everybody got together. We all got around a table. We all ate really well. <laughs> you know. And they gave me birthday presents. So it was like the best Thanksgiving ever. It was like having Christmas twice. right? So I was really thankful for being born near Thanksgiving. But I love it. And I, and I have to admit, I do. it's because of the food. Right? You love the food. You know? Now, who here does ham for Thanksgiving? I just want to know who does ham. Oh, a couple good Gentiles in the room. Now, everybody else does turkey? Everyone else does turkey? Looks like. And a few of you eat nothing. Wow, really spiritual people. They eat nothing. They fast on Thanksgiving because of the atrocities of the pilgrims or something, probably. Whatever. All right? So, but regardless, right? I love the fact that we get together and we have this great big meal beautiful. It's beautiful. We're invited. We're invited to this meal. But you just received the call. That's all. You just got the invitation. You haven't gone. See, because most of you hedge. You hedge. You're not quite sure if you're going yet. This sounds pretty good. You're going to have those little cocktail weenies. I might come. (laughs) <laughs> right? But you're, you're still hedging. The Lady Wisdom, uh, Lady Wisdom, though, she gives more in her invitation than just an invitation to this fine banquet of wisdom. She gives a warning and she gives some advice. First, the warning, verses 7 and 8. She gives this warning. She says, whoever corrects the, corrects the mocker invites insult. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. She knows some of you will not heed the call. Some of you will not come. And she brings up the mocker. The mocker is a theme in Proverbs. Um, The fool and the mocker you find over and over and over again. It's like they're cousins, the fool and the mocker. They hang out, they're buddies. They have very similar dispositions. But But they're a little different on their folly. And I just, I have to bring this up, is, is I, I did a, a really a, a deep, a deep word study. Who is the mocker? And I found that it's one who mocks. <laughs> the, the guy who mocks everything is the mocker. Well, who, who, is it the, who is it that mocks? When you think about it, it's in our society, it's like everybody <laughs> We live in, and I, and, I, and I realize this, and I think it's a sad thing about our cultures. We live in a society that's very cynical, very sarcastic. Most of the comedy, that's why that's really hard to find a good comedian, because most comedians are just cynical and sarcastic, aren't they? That's the only thing we laugh at, cynicism, sarcasm. There's so few Bill Cosby's. <laughs> I mean, really, I love Cosby, but part of the genius of true comedy is someone who can make people laugh 
and has a message that's not cynical and sarcastic, that's not dark and twisted and poking fun at everybody. See, Cosby could do that, right? I love, I love, I, I watched a, a couple clips of Cosby recently. He's still got it. He's still, he's still doing an excellent job at just at finding humor in the positive things in life instead of bringing us, giving us, I'm not even sure if that's laughter. I'm not sure. <laughs> instead of bringing out, uh, uh, you know, those dark things. I truly, I'm sensitive to this. I'm sensitive to this material of the mocker because I realized when I was a young man, I was very sarcastic. I was really, really sarcastic with people, with life. I was very cynical. I didn't believe in people. I didn't believe in my country. I didn't believe in any institutions. I was sarcastic. I just, I, I, my faith was gone. I didn't, I didn't have it. And see, the problem is, is this is why the fool and the mocker are so closely related. It, because see, the fool is destroyed by his ignorance, but the mocker is destroyed by his perceived wisdom. But they're both destroyed by their immobility to move. They won't make a choice. The fool because he's ignorant and the mocker and the sarcastic and the cynical because he simply doesn't believe in anything anymore. And I just want I just want to call. This is just an aside. This really isn't the message. But I just want to say this to you this morning. Understand. That cynicism. Sarcasm. I truly believe I truly believe it's a work of the devil and he wants you to quit having faith. He wants you not to believe in people. He wants you not to believe in churches, not to believe in our country, not to believe in any institution, to have no faith. And it's because if we can start being cynical about everything in life, then maybe the devil knows you'll stop believing in God himself. So if the, if the devil is working in cynicism with you and sarcasm, I want to encourage you to heed the invitation of Lady Wisdom. She gives three pieces of advice as well. Three pieces of advice from Lady Wisdom. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they, and they will add to their learning. Rebuke the wise, they will love you. Instruct the wise, they'll be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add add to their learning. See, the first bit of advice she gives, she says, look, wisdom is cumulative. I have no PowerPoint this morning. I lost it. It's not there. So if you're writing notes, this is point one. All right. <laughs> wisdom is cumulative. All right. <laughs> it, it, that means that you can have more. Just like Thanksgiving, you could have more, right? When someone says, would you like more mashed potatoes? And you say, yes, absolutely more mashed potatoes. And I need, and dressing? No, no, no. I need a gravy moat. That's what, <laughs> I need a gravy moat on the mashed potatoes, right? And, right? and right on top of the turkey and the ham and gravy on that too, right? And, and, and dressing. You can have more dressing. Would you like more? Would you like more ham? No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, I have more turkey. You want more turkey? Oh, yeah, give me some more turkey. Do you want some more pumpkin pie? Oh, yeah, want some more pumpkin pie. Do you want another cinnamon roll? Oh, oh no. Oh, that's, a, that's my house. My family does cinnamon rolls. We seem to be addicted to them. I don't know why. But <laughs> regardless, do you want a little bit more? And we say yes. We're not even done with our first helping, are we? <laughs> and we're going, oh, yeah, there seems to be more of that. I'm just going to pile it on. I'm going to stack it high and deep. I need it. Give me more. And see, it's just like that with wisdom. She says, you can have more. You can have more. I'm not running out. You can have more wisdom. In fact, James chapter 1, we studied not too long ago. James tells us that if any of you lacks wisdom, we should ask for more. 
Ask God who gives generously without reproach, and it will be given to you. Ask for more. You can have more. I, I truly believe that if so many Christians don't realize this wonderful principle about the word of God, that you can have more. So many receive salvation, and they stop right there. They don't grow in their gifts. They don't grow in their love. They don't grow in service. They just get in the door. They don't ever have any more. And I think it's exactly what Paul speaks of when he says, be filled with the Spirit of God as you can have more, you can be full. Just like you will on Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> as you can be full, you can be filled with the Spirit of God. You can have more wisdom. Second piece of advice is verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Actually, this is, this is quoting out, quoted throughout the Proverbs, and it starts the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says the same thing. says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom begins with fearing God. How does, how does wisdom begin with fearing God? I mean, that's really, a lot of people struggle with that. What do you mean I'm fearing God? What the fearing God, it, it's both. It, it, the word can be understood as respecting God. But truly, you should fear God. You should fear God. Just like an ant, if it were smart enough, should fear me if I'm walking down the sidewalk. God's a lot bigger than you. You understand that? He's a lot bigger bigger than you. We should have a healthy fear, a healthy respect for the God, the creator of the universe. And the truth is, <clears throat> the truth is, is most of you really do understand fear to some level because most of us receive Christ. We accept salvation. We accept him as our Lord and Savior, not because we're so good, not because we're so holy and because we know what's best for us. No, it's because of fear. Most of us, I would say 99.9% .9 of the people in this room came to Christ because you didn't want to go to hell. That's very wise of you. <laughs> Amen? It's very wise of you to go, I don't want to go to hell. I want to live with the God of love for all of eternity. That is the beginning of wisdom. But it's only the beginning. It's just the very first step of wisdom. There's so much more. But the beginning is to receive him as Savior, to receive him as Lord. The beginning of wisdom. See, secondly, my second point, the second piece of advice Lady Wisdom gives us is that wisdom comes from God. It comes from knowing God. That's where wisdom is from. So wisdom is cumulative. You can have more, and wisdom comes from God. And the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. All wisdom is from knowing God. In fact, the more, we, the more we study the word of God, the more we become wise in his ways, the more we realize that our own wisdom is ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> right? Is that, that the things that we think are very smart are just nonsense. Right? They really are. The things that we think, oh, they make good sense. To God, they're foolishness. And see, the scripture teaches me that as I walk in the Lord, as I grow in wisdom with God, and you can grow in wisdom. I want to encourage you, just like James does, ask for wisdom. Say, I want more wisdom, and you can have more wisdom. And one of those, that, probably lesson number two after fear of God is understand that you're not that smart. <laughs> understand that God is wise and that you are a sinner. The script, that's what the scripture teaches me as I read. The scripture says, all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. That includes my wisdom. That includes what I think about life. It falls short. 
Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Wisdom comes from God, not from me. Real wisdom comes from God. Verse 11. Verse 11, and our third piece of advice from Lady Wisdom. For through wisdom, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you're wise, your wisdom will reward you. See, wisdom, thirdly, will add to your life. That's what it says. It will reward you. Years will be added to your life. If you receive wisdom, if you partake of wisdom, years will be added to your life. You will be rewarded. Wisdom will add to your life. You can have more wisdom, wisdom from God, and that wisdom will bless you. See, I think it's funny. What Lady Wisdom is trying to teach us is that some of you are praying the wrong prayer. <laughs> we pray the prayer of blessing on us all the time, don't we? We do. We're kind of selfish in our prayer life. I am too. It's okay. <laughs> right? God forgives us for our selfishness. Right? But you ask for pray, you ask for blessing. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. Lord, I want happiness. Lord, I want financial security. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want all these things. What Lady Wisdom says, if you would just ask for wisdom, the wisdom will bless you. The wisdom will help you have financial security. The wisdom will help you heal those relationships. The wisdom will help you have happiness. Lady Wisdom says, call for wisdom. Call for wisdom, and it will reward you. So her, her advice, Lady Wisdom's advice, is that wisdom is cumulative. You can have more. It comes from God, and it will add to your life. It will bless you. But it's not the only invitation you will receive. The, the phone will ring again. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Someone else is calling, though. Soon as you put the phone down, right? Someone else is calling. Woman folly calls. Verse 13. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and she knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house, on the seat of the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way, let all who are simple come to my house. There's a good, there's a, an amazing contrast, right? When you look at the invitation of Lady Folly, I'm mean, a woman folly and Lady Wisdom, she's just sitting there on the stoop. She's just kind of sitting there, the stoop of her house, calling out, y'all come here, <laughs> come to my house. She's prepared nothing. She's done nothing. In fact, you wouldn't even receive her invitation, unlike Lady Wisdom, who sends servants out to speak to you. You wouldn't even hear Lady uh, Woman Folly's invitation unless you were in her neighborhood. That really begs the question is, why are you in her neighborhood? <laughs> Doesn't it? But sometimes when you're in the wrong neighborhood, when you're in the wrong place, that's when you receive the call of foolishness. She calls out, come here. She's prepared nothing. She's set no table. She's not even going to stand up. <laughs> She's just going to sit on the step and say, come on. She has nothing of substance, nothing to, for you to partake of. Well, I might have something in the cupboard. What's, uh, let's see, we got some Twinkies and some graham crackers. <laughs> Would you like a Twinkie? I got some Twinkies. No, I didn't make anything, no, but there's, you know, Twinkies are great, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a good Twinkie and a ding dong? Come on, you know, <laughs> let's, let's, let's enjoy. Let's feast. Then we'll just watch some TV. <laughs> That's the call, it's Lady Folly. She also has some advice for you. Let's look at the advice she gives in her invitation. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Stolen water is sweet.
stolen water is sweet. Many of you have heard that invitation. You've taken something, something that wasn't yours. And when you took it, you heard the invitation. You heard the lie. You said, ah, this will be great. I'll have this. I need that. I should, this should be mine. Whether it be something that you stole from a store, or maybe you just picked up something, maybe you just took something that was not yours. Financially, it was accidentally given to you, maybe. You just, I'll just keep that. No one seems to see. Stolen water is sweet, she says. Food eaten in secret is delicious. You could have that Twinkie all to yourself. <laughs> She's where Lady Wisdom creates a banquet and invites everyone. She shares. She says, I want everyone to partake. Woman Folly says, if you find a Twinkie in there, you better eat it by yourself. <laughs> Just like, you know, I mean, this is a little convicting to me. <laughs> I will admit, food eaten in secret is delicious because, you know, every once in a while, you know you have dinner at home waiting, but you drive by those golden arches. <laughs> you go, I just, stop. I just want some French fries, right? You just get some French fries, and they got to get, you know, maybe a, some chicken McNuggets to go with those French fries, right? You know, and then you got to have something to wash it down with. All of a sudden, you've eaten a whole meal, and you're like, I don't know why I ate this. I don't, now I don't even feel good. And I know I have food at home that my wife or maybe you prepared the other day. It's sitting right there. Why did I do this? And then you have to, you have to hide the remains. <laughs> you got to get rid of the, 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 the McDonald's bag and go, oh, no, I didn't do that. You got to get straight out to the trash. Am I the only person who's ever done this? <laughs> Am I just speaking of my own secret sins here? I'm, confession is good for the soul. <laughs> right? But that's what she says. That's the woman folly's advice. She says, food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, and her guests are deep in the realm of dead. See, the foolish don't know that they're foolish, just like the immature don't realize they're immature. And you have two invitations that you have been given. An invitation of wisdom and an invitation of foolishness. And you receive these invitations probably once a day. If not, ten times a day. You receive these invitations. Lady Wisdom, God's wisdom, calls out to you. And Lady Folly calls out. And truly the question is, what invitation will you respond to? I want to ask a simple question before we close. Do you want more wisdom? Five, six, six of you? Seven? Take a little more over there. Do you want more wisdom? Lady Wisdom calls to you, says you can have more. Or are, are, you, are, are you full? Have you had enough wisdom? Knowing that wisdom is knowing God, that wisdom will add to your life blessings. Are you full? Pass it down. Amen? Then let's close. And let's just close today by simply asking God to give us more wisdom. Close your, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we ask this morning together collectively as a church, as individuals, as families, we hear your call. We hear your call. And we want more wisdom. We want more. We want more, Lord. Maybe, maybe there's one here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. And knowing that wisdom comes from knowing you. Is there one here this morning that just wants to receive Christ that says, I want to know him more? I want to know him. I, I don't know that I've ever received this. So I want to know you more. I think for most of us this morning, 
For most of us, it's not that we don't know the source of wisdom. It's simply that we've stopped asking and we stopped seeking. And perhaps even some of us have listened to the invitation of woman folly on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, in our families, in our workplace. Instead of listening to those calls of wisdom, we've listened to those calls of foolishness. We've listened to these calls of death, these calls that promise nothing. When the Lord has set a banquet of wisdom, the Lord has set up a banquet of of blessing that you can partake of. Father, we ask. Lord, we beg. We're not full. (laughs) Far from it. Most of us are spiritually scrawny because we haven't partaken of the word of God. We haven't partaken of the lavish feast that you've set up for us. Father, we ask not only for the wisdom to to partake, but Father, that we would partake of your wisdom and of your word and of your truth and of this invitation on a daily basis. We say, Father, we're not full. We want more.